Welcome back to Snowman in the Morning. This portion is brought to you by SeatGeek. If you go to my YouTube page or go to snowmanmultimedia.com, click the SeatGeek logo, use the code SNOWMANMULTIMEDIA, you'll get 20 bucks off of your first purchase. It's a new year, new events, especially sporting events. The power of SeatGeek is yours. Speaking of power, the power of the playoff fate of the Indianapolis Colts lies in their own hands. We were here two years ago, and it backfired horribly in the last two games. This time it feels different with everything that's happened and everything they've gone through for them to come together like this and have this opportunity to not only clinch a playoff berth, but an outside chance to clinch the AFC South. Here to help me break it down, my good buddy, one of my best friends in broadcasting. I've had him on the last two years. I love this guy and I love his work. Matt Taylor joins me. Happy New Year, Matt. Great to have you back on. Hey, Happy New Year to you. Thanks for having me, man. Yeah, excited for all that's about to unfold in a couple days here. Saturday is it. 8.15 is the kickoff time. And I know it's crazy in the capital city with all that hangs in the balance for the Indianapolis Colts. Yeah, no doubt about it. I mean, what what more could you want? I mean, you got two teams last year that were kind of left for dead. I mean, you had the 4-12-1 Colts, the 3-13-1 Texans. You know, ironically, these two teams played each other last year at Lucas Oil Stadium, week 18, right, the same weekend. Mm -hmm. uh, I think tickets for that game for, were going for about 15 bucks, maybe less. And uh, here we are at a couple of zeros in the price of admission to get into this one because it's winning you're in, losing, go home. Uh, you know, basically no scenario for either team to make the playoffs if, if, uh, if one of these teams loses. Um, so, again, the next time the Colts lose or the next time the Texans lose, that's it, making Saturday night's game essentially a playoff game, even though it's the regular season finale. Um, it's going to be awesome. Lucas Oil Stadium is going to be crazy. We've been having this debate internally. It's the biggest, you know, home game for the Colts since dot, 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 you know, kind of fill in the blank, uh, take your pick. But uh, first, or I should say biggest game in quite a long time considering the losing that happened last year. So really, really excited for this game. And I know Lucas Oil Stadium is just going to be on fire. Uh, what What do you think was the turnaround point for the Colts? Because they were three and five, then they rip off four in a row. They've won six out of eight to get to this point can you point to um one game or one moment that you th thought turned this season around for the Colts to give them this opportunity to get in yeah it's a, it's a good question I mean obviously when you look at the schedule things kind of turned around in the month of November and the Colts really kind of squandered a, a major opportunity in the month of October if you remember back I think they had you know, four out of five games that month uh, at home, and they only won one of them. You know that that that's that kind of coincided with the defense giving up a huge point total. Mm -hmm. You know there was a stretch there. You know at Jacksonville, at Cleveland against, or excuse me, at Jacksonville, Cleveland at home, Saints at home. The Colts gave up I think at least thirty-seven points in all three of those games, mm -hmm. and they were very winnable games. I mean, uh, two out of those three came down to the wire. You know, they were one-score games, or at least close there in the fourth quarter in the final four minutes. Um, but then I think, you know, in the month of November, this team, uh, they certainly came together and they galvanized, you know, taking care of some some weaker competition, and that's what good teams do, right? They just beat the teams they're supposed to. And, you know, at Carolina, you know, in, in Germany against the Patriots. Um, but I, I guess if, if I'm forced to pick one game, you know, the, the game that I was most impressed by, I think, this season was the Tampa Bay game. And some people are going to disagree with that, and that's fine. But that's it kind of started the home stretch here for the Colts. And I think had the Colts lost that game, you know, this realistic push for the playoffs would not be happening. You know, it was right after Thanksgiving. The Colts had just beaten some bottom feeders again in Carolina and New England. Um, but at the time, uh, Tampa Bay was a, a pretty good stiff test. And – you know, them playing good football has uh, come to fruition as they're in the mix again to win the NFC South and to make the playoffs. I think it was just a really good test for the Colts. It was a hard-fought game, and I think that game was some complimentary football in all three phases, and it kind of just proved to the Colts that if we just don't beat ourselves, if we take good care of the football, we play good, clean you know, version of Colts football, 
you know, it, we're going to be hard to beat. And that's that's sort of what what's what's come to, to, to task here with this team. It's been really fun to see this team kind of bounce back, you know, kind of take their lumps along the way. Uh, but they don't typically lose back-to-back games. In fact, they haven't again since October. So I think that Tampa Bay game showed a lot of resilience for this team, and it proved that this team can be confident in itself um, to compete and, and beat just about anybody in the NFL that's on their schedule. The voice of the Colts, Matt Taylor, joining me here on the program. And Tampa Bay was a good test for the Colts. And it seen, and if you point to that game, and I agree with you, it seems like they started to get their act together with that game and they really came together and I've read so many reports of Shane Steichen being a real difference maker and as the coach of the Colts he has been a difference maker a big time difference maker in getting these players to believe that they can compete absolutely I mean Shane Steichen you know I've been around a lot of coaches and I have talked to a lot of guys about coaches and Shane Steichen is just different he's a young guy so I think he you know I think he understands what these players are going through. He's a former player himself, the college level, right? He was quarterback at UNLV, um, so he understands uh, how, how you know what what buttons to push and, and when to push them, right? And I think the biggest thing is you know, he's holding guys accountable. Um, guys know that they they got to do things the right way on and off the field to maintain a spot within this roster and inside this locker room. Um, but the biggest thing for Shane. He's just so intelligent. He, he's just so smart. I can't, I can't talk enough about just how quick he is with his football mind, his football IQ. And remember, now he's balancing a lot. He's got a lot on his plate now. He's got, you know, the, the head coaching uh, responsibilities, managing the roster, uh, overseeing the rest of the, of the entire coaching staff. Uh, you know, managing the day-to-day stuff, the logistics, all the operations of the business side of football. Um, but also he's calling plays, right? And he's game planning. He's he's the, you know, at, at least the co-offensive coordinator, if you will, along with Jim Bob Cooter. Um, and also, too, he's, he's managing the game uh, on, on game days, you know, understanding when to call timeouts, when to challenge, you know, taking into, into account, you know, all the voices that are in his headset. He's just a wicked smart guy. And when he comes in here and he starts talking about football, that's when his speech intensifies you know that's when his volume of his of his speech uh, really ramps up. I mean, he just loves football. He can process so much in a quick amount of time, and that's where I think the Colts have a distinct edge over their competition. Is just how smart and intelligent and quick on, on his feet Shane Steichen is um, compared to most head coaches in the NFL. That kind of fragment all the responsibilities that that Shane again takes on all by himself because he's that good, that smart, and Um, can handle all of it in real time uh, throughout the course of a game day. He does, and the latter part of this season, six out of eight, he's done very well, as you mentioned. He's got a lot on his plate to manage. One of the biggest things that he has managed and that the Colts have seemed to have found is the running game. That, of course, uh, begat Zach Moss. Uh, That's the return of Jonathan Taylor. But I want to speak on Trey Sermon, who really, in that uh, Pittsburgh game, when Taylor went out, with an injury, really stepped up with 93 yards rushing. So there's a good stable of running backs in Indianapolis just in case we do lose Zach Moss or we do lose Jonathan Taylor for a couple of games. They got a good stable in the backfield. Oh, and they needed every bit of it, as you said, two weeks ago against the Pittsburgh Steelers with you know Taylor out, Moss goes down with that forearm injury, and then you know I think a lot of Colts fans were wondering who Tyler Goodson was. You know, this guy was on the team – uh, halfway through training camp, uh, you know, guy that played at Iowa, so he's kind of familiar to the Midwest uh, Big Ten fans, mm-hmm. um, you know, playing there in the Big Ten West. But, you know, without those two guys, the Colts don't win that game against the Steelers, and they have just kudos to them in, in terms of their uh, ability to handle themselves professionally, to stay ready, because they're not getting any reps in practice with the first team offense. I mean, those are going to Jonathan Taylor. Mm-hmm. or Zach Moss when he's been healthy, right? Either right. or guy right. in terms of the week. Um, so they, they've got to stay ready mentally, and I was just so impressed with their ability to come in and produce at a high level, play at a high level, despite not getting any run in, with either in walkthrough or in practice with the first-team offense. I mean, that offense didn't miss a beat in the second half of that Pittsburgh game. I mean, to your point, there was – one drive we all remember where the Colts ran at 13 consecutive plays right. and sort of took the life and the will out of Pittsburgh to stop the run in the second half of that game. 
that doesn't happen if Sermon and Goodson aren't ready and they're not, you know, handling themselves like pros. Um, because in this league, you know, it sounds cliche, but man, it's so true. NFL, it stands for not for long. Right. You're only one or two plays away from being counted upon big time. And both those guys stepped up in a huge way. They did. And another player that stepped up in a huge way in the game that you pointed out, uh, the game against Tampa Bay, Mo Ali Cox out of VCU on a fourth and one called a 30 yard pass. And it just seems to invigorate him. He's being used more in, in the offense. Big Mo came up with a big catch against Tampa Bay and that set him on fire. And that's also helped the offense. And I just think in this game coming up on Saturday night against the Texans, it's going to take everybody, it's going to take everything. I mean, there's going to be nothing left in the playbook for the Colts at the end of this game. I mean, it's going to be an empty uh, playbook. There's not going to be any calls left on the sheet that, that didn't get dialed up in this game. It's going to take everybody. And, you know, you look at the Texans and their strength is being able to stop the run, right? They're giving up only 88 yards per game. Um, I think they've held four straight opponents to under 80 yards rushing. So they've got a lot of really good players in their front seven, uh, including Will Anderson, who's got seven sacks. Jonathan Grenard's got 12 and a half. Um, they've got some really good linebackers and Blake Cashman. Um, so they're, they're a really formidable bunch. And they just kind of wreak havoc in terms of sacks and quarterback hits. They're number two in the NFL in uh, tackles for loss. And so you look at their numbers across the board. I mean, they're kind of middle of the road in terms of uh, points allowed and passing and things like that. But they can get you behind the chains on first and second down because of their ability to stop the run and grab you down behind the line of scrimmage. So it's going to be huge for the Colts to take their shots in the passing game, get some explosive plays, move the ball down the field in chunks, because it's going to be really hard, I think, for the Colts to have long sustained drives. I think it's this is not going to be one of those games where the Colts can, you know, routinely go 11, 12, 13 play drives, get inside the red zone and either get a field goal or a touchdown. They got to be able to move the ball efficiently and that's where Michael Pittman Jr. and Alec Pierce come in along with Mo Ali Cox to your point. It's going to take everybody in this game to get some chunk plays down the field and to help the overall efficiency of this offense. The chunk plays have been have been coming for the Colts this latter half of the season you mentioned the two big receivers Alec Pierce Michael Pittman Josh Downs is going to play a big role as well as uh as as well as well as Mo Ali Cox and it's and like you said it's going to take it's going to take everybody but they must get down the field uh, they they must get down the field against this Houston Texans defense because they are going to be they're going to line up everybody in the box and come after them yeah, no doubt about it. No doubt about it. So Josh Downs, the offensive line has to protect. It's going to be a great battle between, you know, two great D lines. You know, we talked about the Texans. The Colts are right up there too. They're looking for 50 sacks in a season. Um, and you know, you you got four guys that have at least seven sacks. And the first time they played the Texans, they got to see Jay Stroud six times. They induced uh, two um, strip sacks and fumble recoveries that led to short fields for the Colts where they were able to get points. Um, they were really banged up along the offensive line way back in week two, and that's not going to be the case in this game. Now, the Texans' offensive line is not going to be confused with you know that of the Cowboys of a couple years ago or the best offensive line in the NFL, but it's certainly going to be much better this go-around than it was in week two. And I think you can say the same thing about just the entire Texan squad in general. They're a much better team. C.J. Stroud is completely settled in. He's playing with a lot of confidence. You know, last week he you know came back, bounced back after missing the last two games with a concussion, and all he did was come in right away and throw for you know 75 percent, a couple of touchdowns, and just completely dismantled a pretty good Titans defense. So it's going to take everything, all three phases in this game for the Colts to win. The margin for error is razor, razor thin. Saturday night is it. The Colts play the Houston Texans for a spot in the playoffs and an outside chance at the AFC South title. That's Matt Taylor, the voice of the Indianapolis Colts, joining me as he has all season long to talk Indianapolis Colts on this show and on Snowman Multimedia. Always a pleasure, my friend. Love having you on. Love this relationship that we're building. I hope you continue to come back. I love having you. Anytime. I appreciate you. Yeah, thanks for having me. 
Matt Taylor, the voice of the Colts, joining me here on the program. This portion is brought to you in part by BetUS.com. Your favorite sports book, BetUS.com, is back and in our 30th year of action with live in-game betting, incredible odds with daily odds, boosters, props, and parlays, fast payouts, and exceptional one-to-one customer service. We got it all. And when you sign up and use the code SNOWMAN, you will get a 125% deposit match on your deposit. Log on to BETUS.com or call 800-792-3887. That's 800-79-BETUS. BETUS.com, where the game begins. We got more for you on this here program called Snowman in the Morning with Cole Johnson. Back after this.